And all that's changing, actually, is the 5 is now going to become that, a D major chord instead of a D minor. But it really alters the flavor. Um, see if you agree. <laughs> So it's pretty different. It automatically becomes more classical. Uh, yeah, I see what you did there. I see what you're doing there. Okay. So it automatically becomes more classical. You don't need to see my face to understand that. That's the great thing about music. It's, it's all with your ears. So what we're going to do is a different chord progression and uh, a different key. We don't need to stay in G. This is partially about understanding that you can how to find these minors in any key and um, also what getting a taste of what they sound like because they each tonality G minor B flat minor whatever it is F minor they're all minors but they all have a little bit of a different character to them so if we can see uh, I'm afraid to ask for that chart again if we can see that chart again oh good um, let's see what, what we've got here let me um, so we just did one from a flat key minor. Let's take a look at something uh, in the sharp key, in the sharp key minors. So thanks. Let's, um, oh, I don't know. How about we'll go B minor. So let's take a look down the Aeolian column. Remember Aeolian is the same as natural minor. And we see B minor is there. It's, it's the one that's connected to D major. And so, if you can just uh, invert yourself, or not, then take a look across, you'll see D major. And you see all the chords there in D major are also the same ones that belong to B minor. So that's really all we need. And then we're going to pick out a number sequence and talk through what that looks like in this key. So, let's th uh, let me just think for a second. We'll do something different. Um, we will go one, six, four, five. Okay, so pretty basic, but let's find what those chords are in B minor. So one will be this, six will be G, four will be E minor, and five will be F sharp minor. So one, six, four, five. So a very, very common progression in both versions of the minor. Um, and we'll also get to hear the harmonic version in a second. So let's do something with that. Um, So something like that would be the natural minor version. Here's if we invoke the harmonic minor and we make that 5 become major. It's a different kind of pull into that chord, but different is all that it is. It's not better or worse. I mean, we can use words like weak or strong to define resolutions and progressions, but at the end of the day, <coughs> uh, you know, the sound of that natural minor resolution is something our ears are very used to. It's very pleasing to us. It doesn't bother us to hear that necessarily, um, that five. That minor 5 to 1 kind of um, resolution. So let's do something now that uh, we'll pick another key, and we're going to use the flat 7 a little bit. We haven't uh, thrown that chord in so far, and that's the other big feature, remember, of natural minor, is you get a minor 5 and a flat 7. 
And so the sound of those two chords in conjunction with the others really defines natural minor progressions versus other ones and other modal progressions. So let's see the chart one more time. Um, and what do we want to grab? Um, let's go for something with more flats. Okay, so let's let's let's, let's keep it. Um, uh, what do I want to do? Oh, well, how about F minor? Okay, so F minor. We're going to look down the column of Aeolian until we get to F. So boom, 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 boom. We see it down there near the bottom, and then slide to the left. And if you did it, if you're able to do that before. Yeah, just up a little more. We're looking for A flat major, basically. So A flat major is going to be the relative major of F minor. It's going to give rise to that natural F minor scale. Yeah, right there at the bottom. And then we could see the other chords that we have. So I'm still going to start on the one because it just gives us a clearer sense of what our tonality is. But now I'm going to go one, four, five, seven. Um, I'll keep it on piano for now. So one is this, meaning F minor. Four is this, B flat minor. Five is C minor. And then seven is E flat major. So actually, I want to alter that. Um, didn't like it the way it came out. I want to go instead to another chord we haven't used yet, which is another one of the majors which is the three. So in this key, our three is A flat. That's going to give a little uh, bit of a different kind of sounding progression. So one, three, five, seven. me of something, I don't know what, but again, that's kind of half the point. You hear these progressions so much in film music and pop music and rock music and the rest of it, that sometimes just a certain progression done in the right way will evoke something familiar that you can't quite put your finger on, but uh, that sounded very much to me like something from a movie. It might have even been the movie Amelie, I'm not sure. But uh, So you got to see those other chords in action a, a little bit. And again, this sort of sense of what we might call a weak progression. Five, seven. Again, sounds great to us. We don't have a problem with it. No, nobody at a concert is going to stand up and go, that progression was weak. It doesn't really happen. I've never seen it anyway. But, you know, what people do sometimes is... In the music, they'll decide that progression needs a little more punch, and they'll go from the flat seven. They'll use both to accomplish that stronger pull of gravity into the one. But here's what that would sound like. One uh, more example, which is the harmonic minor version. If we go one, three, so we can see immediately that's weird if we maintain the flat seven coming after that natural raised seventh, I should say. I mean, it's sort of like uh, reversing what you what we did here, which in terms of tension is going the other way. So it's not quite as effective. And you find these things out by playing around with these chords on your own. Um, you know, you can really do the same thing that we're doing, especially if you have a little bit of knowledge of scales. But even if you only know how to play in C on the white keys, you can experiment with trying out different combinations of chords 
and seeing what sounds good, what works to your ear, and what doesn't work, you know? And, and, and I think this is the place where all, or most composers and songwriters and musicians, and especially in, with a creative kind of bent, start is, you know, in, in a, an experimental kind of stage. <clears throat> so that, um, you know, you're not limiting yourself. You're not practicing a certain exercise of certain chords in a certain way. Not in, in the beginning. You're just exploring. And to think of it from an exploratory kind of perspective, I think, is the best way to develop your own musical vocabulary. So take some of these things that we're talking about, try them out on your own. <clears throat> okay. Well, um, let's talk about styles for a second. Because you can hear this mode in a lot of other styles and everything that I've done so far has been kind of staying a little bit in that medieval that pretty piano kind of filmic sort of vibe but let's hear an example of natural minor happening in rock and so we're gonna look at if we if we can look at that chart once more just for the people at home not that one but for the people at home not that one either they, these um, people at home, not that one either. But when we get it, what's going to happen is you're going to follow along, and we're going to look at what is the parent scale of, of C minor. Okay? So C minor is a good one. It's a popular key. It's what we would call the parallel minor of C major. So that's just another little bit of bonus terminology for you. If you have the same root, but you switch from the major to the minor, you call that parallel relationship versus a relative relationship. So when we look down the Aeolian column on this thing, we find C minor down there. I think it's the fourth up or fifth. And then um, don't look at that one. Go to the left. You see E flat major. So E flat major looks like this with three flats, E, A flat, and B flat. And, uh, you know, just as an aside, some of this major scale stuff I'm going through a little bit quickly, but uh, that's because this is basic stuff that if you don't know already, it's out there, it's on Google, there are a lot of, you know, resources to kind of get your stuff together as far as what are the basic 12 scales. So I'm um, not going to get a lot into that. I'm just going to say, here's what the flats are, here's what this scale looks like. So now C is the minor that we're working in. So what we want to do is just come up with a, a groove, not unlike the ones we've been doing, or a progression not unlike the ones we've been doing, but with a groove a little bit different than what we've seen before. So we'll just go... I'm just going to use three chords on this one. So we'll do one, six, four. So I mixed it up a little bit. I threw a flat 7 in there. I went to the 5 one time. But the point is made, right? Which is that it can still be very funky, very kind of bluesy, even though, um, you know, it, it's the exact same mode that we used for that other kind of very medieval, sort of very fancy kind of stuff. So we'll stay in C, but we'll do another one that um, does a little, little something different. So... Uh, let's think about, actually I'm going to do a little, a little like kind of old school, sort of, sort of like what I was doing before. 